weekend. Uh, first matchup with, with with the Pirates in our in our modern era here, uh, and uh, our our FBS game this year as well. Yeah, well, um, last week was a great showing and a great showing of where we at. So I'm happy about being able to see how far we off of being in the top 25 and going to the playoffs. Um, they, they got a preview of what the playoffs is going to look like. And, um, and so we're 16 points away from that. And um, so we got to get better. And what better way to doing it than going to face these Pirates, man, who almost upset NC State. So I'm sure they're feeling good about themselves and what they're doing there. And coach Houston is a great coach, and I know he's going to have them ready. They will not overlook us. Um, he'll have them ready to go. And, and we know that. So we're looking forward to the challenge. JB, you want to lead us off? Sure thing, sure thing. Yeah, let, let, let just, just talk about the impact of having a game like this in state, coach. You know what I mean? I, it is an FBS opponent, but, you know, it's it, it's kind of one of those games that can that can help you on the recruiting trail and you guys can kind of like make a statement, you know, not just to the country, but obviously here in North Carolina. Can you So can you speak on the impact that this game can have uh, from that perspective? Well, I think anytime you in state and you playing somebody bigger than you, no different than when they play NC State, right? So you you have that type of energy. You know how um, big it is because 50, 60% of your roster is from North Carolina. So they understand, they grew up watching East Carolina. Um, and, and now you get a chance to, you know, go there and play them. And um, that's not always the case when you're at an FCS program. So the great thing about North Carolina is we got a lot of universities in North Carolina. <laughs> That's the great part about North Carolina um, with that. Um, and, and so, man, we get a chance to play these Pirates for the first time, and, and um, it's going to be really good for recruiting, um, you know, because we we recruiting three stars and four stars. And so I'm um, sure East, uh, East Carolina is doing the same. And, and um, so it would be fun to um, be able to get on the field with them. Now, I know you guys uh, uh, lost your last game by 16 points, but did you see any improvement um, based off uh, from week one to week two? Well, here, here's the thing, JB. I think what what a lot of teams are saying right now in week two, we, we are tough. We played tough for four quarters. We had our opportunities. So it's not like we never had the opportunity to win the game. We had the opportunity. We was in the red zone twice in the fourth quarter. And you got to give them credit. They made the plays in the fourth quarter while we was in the red zone twice to, to um, tie the game. Um, and so it, it's really good to know that um, our best game was not played and we had an opportunity to win the game at the end of the game. So that's what you want. My previous team would not have been in that game. Um, when they went up 17-0, we would have probably lost the game by 30-some points, Okay. And, um, and this team didn't do it. They fall back 17, 14. Um, and then it's third and 18 and they throw a pass interference on something that what had nothing to do with the call. Right now, did my kid grab him? Yes, but he wasn't throwing it over there. So you let that go, man. Don't do not bail him out. And, and that changed the game because they was able to go down and score with that. Uh, where the momentum had came back to us. We had scored 14 unanswered points, and now we're about to get the ball back, and now it's a different ball game, okay? Um, and, you know, they was able to capitalize on that and, and go down. So, you know, that's the that's the type of stuff that you got to deal with in the playoffs, man. You know it. Every call going to be, you know, off and on, and, and, and guys going to make plays here and there. But my guys kept fighting. What we did not do is we play. We did not play smart, guys. That's the, that's the difference between championship team and just potential championship team. <laughs> championship team play smart for sixty minutes, and we did not do that. And what do I mean by that? I'm talking about the discipline of doing your job, the discipline of using the technique, the discipline of knowing your play. So in the fourth quarter, you don't mess up. Like the first pick we threw. Um, the receiver in the wrong spot. So all of a sudden, you know, Hodge is looking, and, yeah, everybody mad at him because he threw the pick, 
but the receiver didn't know what he was doing. And, and that's the type of stuff that um, you, you got to eliminate if you're going to be a championship team, right? And that's where we need to be. But I needed to see us play tough against a playoff football team for four quarters. So we, so you asked for the improvement. The improvement was that we was able to do that, okay? Now we just got to learn how to be smart football team. And what better way to do that than to play a great, smart football team in ECU? You mentioned that kind of fight back from your team and something that they didn't have last year. At what point maybe this season did you see that this team could be different, that they did have that ability to kind of rally back when they were down in a game? Well, I saw it um, based off the training I put them through. You know, I told you guys last week, I went old school. I, we, we wasn't doing the, the technology training anymore. We we going, you know, Rocky style, you know, Rocky Four. We we chopping wood, and we we got we got to get there. And that's when I knew that my team was going to be a tough football team because of the the you know the training that I put them through um, in the summer, and they was able to overcome. Now they didn't start there; they started weak. They started hiding between the walls, is what I call it, and eventually they came out of that. OK, and they became tough. So, Jordan, that's what that I, I knew we were going to be a tough football team. And uh, but it's good to see it when you play a team like that. OK, so because uh, you look at you look at the team we played first at Citadel, they beat the number six team in the country or, you know, top 10 team in the country at um, East Tennessee. Right. OK, so they beat East Tennessee State and we slapping them around. So. It's, it's not like Citadel is a bad football team. It was just, we was just that tough. And, um, and William and Mary, you know, a uh, lot of, lot of, lot of trickery, man, in their offense that, that, um, you know, kept them being on top of what they was doing. So yeah, Jordan, I, I, I thought we was tough coming in and it was great to verify that last week. You talked about this a little bit last week as well, how for a lot of this team, it was their first road game. How do you think they handled just kind of that overall experience? The, the road game, um, that, that did not affect us. Um, you know, we went in 2020, most of these guys was on that team, um, you know, on the road, four weeks in a row playing FBS opponents. So that piece did not affect us. Um, we was prepared for that. Uh, they handled it well. Um, that that's why they were able to come back and, um, you know, give themselves a chance to win the game. So, you know, when you look at the road piece of it, that, that didn't affect us too much. Coach, if I could sneak back in here uh, and ask a couple more questions about ECU. Um, they, they, they have a potent offense. Um, what impresses you the most? Obviously they got a quarterback who's season, um, and, but I, I know they have weapons outside of that. What, what about this offense and this team? Can you uh, tell us when it comes to your scouting report? Okay. First of all, um, we, we got to make sure number two, stay on the sideline. <laughs> Fastest man in college football. Okay. This dude is fast. He made NC State linebackers who all potential draft picks in the National Football League. He made them look like they were running in mud. That's just, this this guy's unbelievable fast. And, and so um, we got to try to contain him. Uh, he's the guy that, that can take the ball 80 at any moment. OK, um, they got some great receivers. Okay? They got three of them. And um, that, that makes it tough because you can't. Just focus on one guy. Normally, teams in college only got one guy, not three guys. And they got three dudes that can legitimately make plays on you. They got tall. They got height. They got size. Uh, they got speed, okay? And then, JB, the tight ends, man. When you got tight ends that can run like them two tight ends that they have, um, that makes it bad, man. So that's why they so potent is that you got a great running back that can take it to the house and you got great receivers that can run routes and get open and use their size uh, with fade balls, jump balls to number 11. So they can do that all day long. And people forget about five in the slot. I mean, this guy is probably the most explosive guy. Um, he ain't got as much um, catches as the other two, but he got eight targets and he got seven catches. That means that that dude can make plays when they come to him. And, um, and so 
you you got to look at that offense and say, man, if I'm quarterback and I'm pretty, I'm gonna be pretty good too, right? I don't throw the ball to these guys and hand the ball off the two, man. I'm good to go, right? And um, but he he's smart, the quarterback. He knows how to get them the football, and, and he got an arm, and he knows the offense. He knows every defense. I think this is his fifth year or something starting or something like that. So, man, I mean, hey, look, if I got five years in college, man, it, it's it's going to be pretty bad for everybody else. And uh, that that's what you're looking at with this offense. I'm sure that coach is going to get them to try to run the football because their running game has not been up to par. But it's because of who they play. You play NC State, you play ODU, who, are, who is great at stopping the run, okay? So I'm sure he going into this week saying, we got to run the ball, guys. We got to establish the run on these cameras, right? That's what I would be saying if I was playing a D2 school. We got to run the football and, and establish this run so we can get it going. So when we get the confidence, we'll be ready for that. Nice, nice. I got one last question for you, Coach, as far as, well, what experience do you have with Dowdy Ficklin Stadium? What do you know about it? And, uh, you know, whatever, whatever experience you do have with that atmosphere that they're going to provide, how are you going to prepare your players for it? Well, um, I've never been there, so I, I, I don't know nothing about East, East, uh, ECU. So it's, it's, it's going to be my first trip um, there. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be loud. I watched the game when they played NC State. Um, you know, everybody showed up, and they was all crazy. So it looked like it's a crazy atmosphere when it comes to college football games. And, and um, so I'm sure that the fans will come out and, and, and be loud and, you know, night game and, you know, they expect it to, to, you know, have a great showing on offense. And, um, and so, you know, this is, this is um, what they do. And so I look forward to, to, to being in the stadium because I, again, I haven't been in that stadium. I haven't been in North Carolina state stadium. I have never been in North Carolina stadium. And so never been in Duke stadium. We're going to get to play all these people and I'm going to get to see their stadium. So, um, and then I rank them after it's all done, JB. I'll let you know who's the best stadium. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an off the record type of conversation right there. We'll <laughs> definitely have it. Appreciate you, coach. That's all I got for you, man. Good luck on Saturday.